right, let's mute.
hello, hello, hello. Good seeing you, brother. Hey, good seeing you tonight, Pastor. How are you doing? Blast, 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 coming and going. There you go. I'm going to turn this air just off here. Excited about tonight. And uh, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of open us up here and get, get ready to roll. Uh, Amen. That sounds good. For all those kind of watching live from wherever they're watching from, but uh, I'm Pastor Joe Chafin, Spirit Life Church and here in Graysville, Alabama. And we have with us Reverend Dwayne Byerly from Nashville, That's Tennessee. That's me. And uh, <laughs> we are going to get into the word. This is part two of Is This the End? Uh, not for us, Bubba. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about end time events, and we're talking about the uh, day and hour that we're living in today. Yeah, Amen. So we're getting some people joining us up in here. I want to just shout out to my buddy Lynn Chandler out there. We're glad y'all to be able to tune in this evening. Now we are going to try. I'm going to remind everybody if you're on our Spirit Life Church Graysville page. If you have a question, you can try to put it on there. We're trying to monitor this, and we might be able to answer a question if somebody right. has a Got to be on the page, though. Got to be on that Spirit Life Church Graceful page on Facebook. That yep. will be the only place we will be able to see you from. And uh, also, uh, we also want to say that uh, if you want to give into the ministry of uh Brother Dwayne, you can do so on his website, uh, Prophecy and Promises. Yep. We got a, a PayPal link to PNP7 at PayPal and uh, a couple other things. We'll get that posted up here. It'll pop up uh, in the feed here on the on the page soon. And um, also, uh, you can purchase the book that he has there. Uh, yeah, a moment's notice. Uh, Dr. Hilton Sutton. It's a great book. Uh, it covers the season of his, it says recognizing the season of Jesus's appearing. And that's what we were really talking about a lot last week. And we're going to talk about a, a little bit of it this week too. It'd be kind of the same. And uh, we're got, there's different seasons. God always has times and seasons. And man, we look at the season we're in right now, you would think it's a crazy season, but it's really not. It's really the season of Jesus is appearing because the world gets a little crazy before Jesus comes. <laughs> but we don't have to be. We don't have to be. That's what these meetings like this is for, is to reassure you that God's got things lined up and in control here. He's given us the power and the authority to walk through this. Yes. No matter what Satan can throw at us through the world, we got this covered. And something that always gets me, and I always try to tell people when it comes to the end time stuff uh, and all that you see in the book of Revelation and everything, a lot of people have this misconception thinking, oh, you know, that's a terrible time. The Antichrist is ruling and reigning. No, Jesus is in total control. He's Lord over the Revelation period. Matter of fact, right there in the book of Revelation, he is the only one who is worthy of opening those seals opening yep. the book and stuff and he's controlling every aspect and, and like we said yeah and like we said last last month when when he opens those seals that's what starts the tribulation period he can't even start without jesus saying it's okay it's, it's time to go yep he that's can't right. do it amen so, amen we're going to dig on into this and uh First, let, let me just pray along with everybody that's watching right now. Yeah, Father, let's, pray. let's pray. We just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, thank Father, for your love and for your mercy. Father, our purpose behind all this is just to share the love of Christ with other people out there. Not, yes. we're, we're definitely not scaring anybody. Oh, no, no. We're just trying to reveal to them what you, how you have control yeah, of things. And, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise for what you're doing in the earth today. We thank you for a great awakening. We yes. pray that you'll open the eyes of the believer and the unbeliever, Father God, of, of, of what's taking place in the earth right now, and that the season, we're entering into the season of your coming, and yes. we must be prepared. So, Father, we just thank you that our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our ears, and our eyes are open unto you this evening to, to teach us from the Word of God, yes. and we thank you, Father God, yes. that we will... Uh, grow and mature in the things of God in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. 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 In that name. In that yeah. name of Jesus, demons all over the world tremble. I tell yeah. you what, they, they know their time is short and they're on their way to hell. But you out there don't have to be. That's right. <laughs> That's Thank why you. Jesus came. Give you a way okay. out. Way of escape. <laughs> we are going to pick up somewhat where we left off somewhat. And I know we'll cover, uh, kind of recap different things as we go along and bump into different things. But here's the question tonight. What is the difference between the rapture and the second coming of Christ? Yep. A lot of misconception. Yep. With I see the uh, Connors join us there. I'm just giving a shout out to them. I see them on there. Uh, yeah, the difference between the uh, purpose of the appearing of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus. There are two distinct events that are seven years apart. They're seven years apart. So that, you know, and they got different, they got different purposes. Now we may have touched on a few of them last month, but hey, we always learn by repetition. So yeah. we'll go through them again. You know, we'll touch on them again. So let's look at the purpose for his appearing when he comes in the clouds. And that's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, uh, 14, I believe, or 13 through 16. And uh, let's just read that in the scripture here. I know I got it, Mark. Yeah, we'll start with uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brother, or unknowing. I do not want you to be unknowing concerning those who have fallen asleep or those who have died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus, those who are dead in Christ Jesus. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, and that's a good source. The word of the Lord is a good source. Is uh, By the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Yes. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. See, he, he's coming to meet us in the air. And, uh, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Yes. But it's, so we're talking about, the very first thing he says, he says, those who are asleep in Jesus will go up first, will not precede them. So we're talking about the resurrection of the righteous dead. And if you remember, you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees back during Jesus' time. And this is an old joke, but it's the true truth of the matter. The, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, yeah. but the Sadducees yeah. did not believe in the resurrection. And that was why they were so sad, you see. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe it. But, I, but I'm here to tell you tonight, if you, was to go, if you was to go into the oldest book known to mankind, and that's Job. Yeah. The book of Job is the oldest book known to mankind. It's in the Bible. The oldest book to mankind is in the Bible. And uh, that book is the first book ever written they, they, they i don't think they even know how old it is but yeah. job says there in job 25 and 26 for i know my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day he's already using them in time terms yeah. all the way from the beginning remember god knows the the end from the beginning he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Now, if you die and the worms eat your body up and everything, how are you going to see God in your flesh? Because <laughs> the worms ate it. Because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you, the, the, re the resurrection, God knows how to resurrect people. We've seen Jesus do it. It happens in some of our ministries these days. It's never happened with me, I, I, but I believe it, and it can. But uh, we know that these things can happen. Uh, another scripture is uh, 
like Psalm 17, 15 says, as for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. See, there, there's an awakening for those who pass. They'll be, they'll be satisfied when we awake. And it says, when I awake in your likeness. Now that goes right along with 1 John 3, 2. That says, beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he, the Lord Jesus, shall appear, there's our term, the appearing, shall appear, we shall be like him. And, the, and the back in the Psalms, the psalmist said, I'll awake in your likeness, for we shall see him as he is. I'm telling you, God knows how to resurrect people. So the resurrection of the righteous is the number one purpose for the appearing of Jesus in the clouds. Two is to gather his body, the church, together as one flawless man. See, uh, Jesus, uh, flawless, it, it's, that's right there in the very beginning in Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians, it, uh, 2 and 1. It says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the gathering together to him. That's what this whole chapter here is about. Yep. The, 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 the con concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus and the gathering unto him. There are two different things. It's got an end in there. That's a conjunction. So that means there is the second coming of the Lord, but then there's a gathering of the saints together unto him too. Remember in, a, in Ephesians uh, 5.27, what did Paul tell us back there? In Ephesians 5 27, Joe. He that said he might about, present it to himself a glorious church, not oh, having yeah. spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy without blemish. A glorious church. Amen. Jesus is coming for a glorious church. And it says he'll be presented. The, the, the Holy Spirit used the word, used Paul to use the word presented there. And Jesus is not presented with an incomplete body. He's not going to be missing an arm, right. a leg, That's a right. Joe, a Lynn, a Michelle. No, he's, he's not going to be missing not an area, one of us, a Peter, Sally, or Sue. If we've been born again, we are going to be presented to Jesus at that time when the church becomes glorious. Amen. And, and um, you know, Jesus says that the Father, um, in, in John uh, 17, he talks about how the Father has given him men out of the world. He was talking about his disciples, I believe, but through his disciples, God's given him so many more men out of the world to be a part of his body. And he said that he has kept those men and he has lost none of them. You know, Jesus said he had lost none of them except that man of sin, the son of perdition, so the scriptures could be fulfilled as those things had to be done. Uh, but he has not lost anybody. Once you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, he is not going to lose you. He is not going to misplace you. He is not going to forsake you. I'm telling you what, you're part of his body then. He's gathering us together. Hey, you can leave him. You know, the scripture says no one can, not no demon in hell, no one can pull us out of the Savior's hand. But you can walk yourself right on out. That's right. I believe that. You can walk yourself right on out. But the glorious church, the glorious church that, you know, John also sit there in 17. I love that chapter 17. It's, it's Jesus's prayer for us. And he said that uh, in 1721, he says that they all may be become one as you father are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So when we're one and complete, the father's going to call Jesus and say, go ahead, go get your body. Your body is complete. The last soul has been one. And then the glorious church at that time will be holy, pure, mature. We get all these descriptions out of the scripture. They'll be, we'll be unified in the faith. We'll be in the faith of Jesus. We'll be hot for God. And we'll be walking in the greatest anointing that we have ever that the world has ever seen. I mean, not even, 
Uh, the acts of the body of Christ will surpass those of even Jesus. Remember, he said, even greater works than these you shall do. And it's because of that dual anointing that comes on us for the purpose of causing the world to believe that Jesus is who he said he was and is. <laughs> So when the master comes, his servants, the scripture also says, when the master comes, his servants will be found doing, will yes. be found winning souls. We're going to be so busy at the appearing, at this appearing, we're going to be so busy. The church is going to be a glorious church, winning souls, bringing in a harvest of people into the kingdom like has never been seen before. And it's just going to be a great time, Pastor Joe. I'm excited about yeah. that. There's going to be things that, we just don't even know what to oh, yeah. talk about. He is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And, you know, I really believe there's an awakening coming that's beyond anything that we've ever experienced, man's ever experienced. That's and, right. Uh, God's going to be pouring out his spirit upon uh, people. Yep. He said uh, all flesh. That goes for the wicked. That goes for the man. Yeah. Everybody. You know, Everybody's going to get it. I had an opportunity to read a number of different books concerning different awakenings and stuff. And it's uh -huh. astonishing, you know, uh, in the formation of this great nation that you and I live in, there was a, a great awakening that took place that literally gave birth to this nation, the United States of America. And uh, there was a time that the pastors of that day, prior to the awakening, they questioned, could anything good ever, the, the, the streets were full of rioters, the uh, drunkenness, carousing, bunch of folks. Hey, man, I mean, sounds like today. <laughs> all over the United States, all over America. And uh, the pastors just cried out, you know, in amazement. And then an awakening began to happen. And it literally started with just a, a man beginning to pray and invited people, his city to come, and they started coming, and then it spread from city to city, and they were literally, before the found, founding of the United States of America, they were literally closing down the bars, the saloons, and that, because nobody was going anymore. Yep. Everybody was talking about God, talking about the things of God. That's an awakening. That's the kind Amen. of thing that we That's are making it to the higher power. <laughs> We're just going to see it happen again. Amen. Amen. In a greater aspect. That's right. Even greater. God never does goes backwards. God is no. not a backwards God. He's a God that multiplies. He's a God that increases. So he never subtracts. The only, yeah, that old verse in Job, you know, we talked about Job earlier. That old verse in Job that says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Well, let me tell you what. The Lord giveth everything good. The Lord taketh away everything bad. He doesn't, he doesn't give anything bad. That's the devil. You know, the Lord takes away things that are bad. He takes away addictions. He takes right. away sickness. That's what the Lord taketh away. Yep. Job had his little doctrine a little messed up there. But we, when we know God, we can see. He didn't see. have a book to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't have a book to read. That's for sure. He didn't have nothing to find, find so, out. You know, find out but, you know, we see that it, it happens like that. You know, God is the one who gives everything good and he takes away everything bad from you. So, I mean, that's, that's the great thing about God when we come to know so, it. And speaking of, speaking of taking away, once that church becomes glorious, it's going to be taken to heaven. That's yeah. the third purpose or reason for the appearing of Jesus. Yes. Now, when we think about heaven, we have to look at it like this. It says uh, in Colossians 3, 4, when Christ, who is our life, appears there's our, our term when he appears then you also will appear with him in glory now lots of people have this definition for this word glory but let's let's look at it again here first timothy three sixteen, and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness god is manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit seen by angels, preached amongst the Gentiles, believed in the world, and received up into glory. Now, where was he received up into? Heaven. He was received up into heaven. And it says, we'll also appear with him in glory. When he refers to glory here in, in Timothy, it's referring to heaven. When it, I believe when it, in Colossians, it's referring to heaven again. 
And then you got 2 Peter 1, 16 through 18 that reads like this. For we did not follow after cunningly devised fables. These are not old wives' tales that we're hearing out of the Bible. These are truths. And these are not stories. These are actual events. And he didn't, there were not cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received from God the Father honor and glory, which such a voice, when such a voice came to him from the, ex, from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son and whom I well please. And then it says, and we heard this voice, voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mount. So we see that glory many times refers to heaven. Now there's a glory that can come upon us in uh, meetings and events, and it's it's just heaven touching earth, man. That's yeah. what that is. But we're going to be received up into heaven, into glory. So to take this perfect, glorious body into heaven is the third reason, a third purpose for the appearing of Jesus. And then we have, so when he does that, we've talked about, uh, you know, the church and, and, and those of us who are resurrected from the dead, but he's also going to save the righteous who are alive from the wrath to come. Now, we covered that last time in, in, in last month when we talked about uh, God always removes the righteous before he uses his wrath. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says that he delivers us from the wrath to come. And then Nahum 1.2 tells us that he reserves his wrath for his enemies, not his body, not his family, not his called out ones. So he's going to, that's when he jerks, the, the uh, rapture happens and the righteous are removed from the earth before the tribulation period can be, be can even begin. And another reason, I'm, I'm getting through these things here, Pastor. You, you stop me if you need to. You've you got something to throw in here. I want you to get to. Because I'm, I'm wanting to, to get through these. Uh, number five is we have to have the appearing and the catching away to heaven of the body of Christ, the anointed righteous ones, for the revealing of the Antichrist. Absolutely. And in, in Second Thessalonians, we read the first part of it earlier saying that it is all about the second coming of Jesus and the gathering together of the saints unto him. And so when we get to verse uh, verse three, three, what's that got there? You got that open? Verse three, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So now, in a lot of Bibles, it'll say the great apostasy at the beginning of this chapter. Yeah. And when you, and everybody calls it a, a falling away. away from the church, Yeah. from the faith. Now, there are some that depart from the faith because the devil is trying to do a great job of deceiving people. He's done it for thousands and well, maybe millions of years because he was doing it before Adam and Eve ever showed yeah. up on the scene. Yeah, he, was. he did it in heaven and he deceived the angels. And, uh, but it says the falling away, it's not from the church because we've already been introduced to this part of, of scripture that it's about the coming of the Lord and the gathering together of his body. This falling away is, when you look it up in the Greek, it means departure. There has to be a departure first before the man of sin can even be revealed. There has to be a departure before he can be re revealed. And so if we continue to read on in there, uh, it says in verse four, he says, who, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now that's a mid middle tribulation picture. That's yeah. when he declares himself God, moves his headquarters into Jerusalem Jerusalem is no longer no, known as the holy city, but it's known as, uh, uh, what is it? It's known, what does it say? It's, it's known as uh, Sodom. 
and Egypt. The scripture in Revelation says it's known called, then starts being called Egypt and Sodom. Egypt for the item worship, Sodom for the uh, Sodomite practices of sexual hoo ha. <laughs> uh, to be try to be nice about it. Yeah. And so that's a middle tribulation event. Uh, go on ahead there with verse six. Uh, verse six or five? Six. Six. And now we know that with hope, now we know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yes, amen, oh, amen, God. amen. So we see there in verse six, it says, now you know what is re restraining in the New King James, uh, yeah, I think you had withholding, yeah. uh, that he may be revealed in his own time. So we're talking about the son of perdition. And we see that there's a restrainer and he has to be revealed in his own time. The Antichrist cannot be revealed before his time. Well, his time is a seven year period of tribulation. Yes. And that seven year period is 84 months, 2,520 days. And it's divided into two equal parts of 42 months and 1,260 days, three and a half years. And, and we can see that, you know, in the scripture, and we see it in Daniel 9, Ezekiel 39 and 9. We see these seven year periods and multiple scriptures in the book of Revelation confirm, you know, the dividing of three and a half years for this, and three and a half years for that. So he has to be revealed in his time. But the he who restrains, it says he who restrains, uh, verse seven, he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. That goes back to verse three, he who is falling away. There has to come a falling away first, a departure. And the departure of the restrainer has to be removed. Now, they taught that was the Holy Spirit years ago. Yep, they and did. many people will teach that. But it is not the Holy Spirit. No. The Holy Spirit is God. He, he, not it, he is part of the Godhead. Him, Jesus, and the Father. You cannot take them out. They are omnipresent. They are omniscient. They know everything. You cannot take them out of somewhere and put them in somewhere. They are everywhere at once. So this he cannot be the Holy Spirit because right. we talked last time, people get saved during the tribulation period. Yep. So the, it takes the Holy Ghost. No one can say that Jesus is Lord. He's the master, except by the Holy Spirit. The scripture tells us that. Right. So the Holy Spirit has to be here for people and great multitudes of every tongue and every nation to get saved. That he is the body of Christ in which he, Jesus, is the head. And we said if the if the if the if the head is he, then the body gotta be he. Yeah. Otherwise, you got a freak, you know. <laughs> and Jesus ain't no freak. <laughs> you know, we are the masculine, we are the he that is caught up out of the way. We are the restrainer of wickedness on the world in the world today. We're known as the body of Christ, the body of anointing, and it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Hey, everybody, Jesus Christ is anointing, is the anointing that breaks the yoke to whatever is binding you today in your life, no matter what it is, whether it's poverty, sexual immorality, alcohol, drugs, no matter what it is, overeating, Jesus is the anointing and his body, church, and a pastor and godly people, you want to get around them. You want to get around the anointing. You want to get around the anointed ones so that yoke can be destroyed off you. Mm -hmm. Don't try to do it yourself. Jesus Contact me. Or you. Contact Jesus me. Or you. To set the captive free. Yeah. And that same setting free is available today. All you have to do is yield to the Holy Spirit, yield to that anointing, and let that anointing just break the chains of bondage that Satan has on you and walk out of that prison cell free. That's right. And sometimes, 
Sometimes that bondage is sickness and disease. Yes. I mean, it comes in all forms. The devil uses all forms to bind people, but the anointing breaks the yoke. The body, that's why it's good to fellowship and with members of the body of Christ. You got to get yourself, you know, this COVID has kept a lot of people away from church, but let me tell you, everybody, a lot of it's being lifted now as far as the government goes, but it's always been said in the word of God that uh, no sickness in the Psalms, no sickness nor disease shall come nigh my dwelling. And you know what? This is my dwelling. And this house is my dwelling. And wherever I go, if I go to church, that's my dwelling. Plus there's healing in the house of the Lord. And we got to get back to the sanctuary. That's what it's the a holy is. place. You can always find the presence of God there, which yes. the presence of God is the anointing of God and the anointing of God destroys the yoke. Man, I don't know why I'm on that now. But that's a, that's a big thing right now. We need to get back into our churches. We need to get into fellowship. I mean, especially if you're bound up with something, no matter what it is, sickness, whatever it is, you need to get around a good, solid, faith-believing Christian so you, he can help you with his anointing to destroy that yoke and get you sick. Get in church. Glory to God. Church. <laughs> And we're not just saying, and I'm not a pastor. I'm not saying that, you know, Pastor Joe, you know, he wants to see a lot, a lot. He wants to see his congregation and his sanctuary full, of course, because he knows that he's got the word of God that will set you free. He knows that he's got an anointing on his life. You know, I don't have a church. I'm not trying to encourage you to go to church. You know, Pastor Joe, I'm trying to get you to go to church anywhere. I'm trying to get you to go to church somewhere where you can find believers that can help you get set free. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, well, we better move on, Pastor. <laughs> okay, so we see here the purpose of the appearing is the rapture of the church. We see that uh, it's what I always term the great escape. It's, it's to cause the body of Christ, the anointed ones, us, uh, those who are, are washed in the blood of Christ and are the body of Christ, we are going to escape the great wrath of God that's poured out upon the earth. That's right. That's what it said and in Thessalonians 1.10. He Thessalonians comes, 1 and according to 1 Thessalonians 4.17, it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet him in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. He does not come at that point in time and set foot on the earth again. He comes right. to rapture to get his church, and he meets us all in the air. That's right. And, and we meet him there, and then, then we depart. That's so, right. That's right. So he meets uh, him in the air. That's, 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 number, that's number five. So uh, we uh, got number six there that will be uh, the revealing the Antichrist. We covered that. Uh, I want to hit one thing and, just for a second. Uh -huh. I want to hit just one thing just for a second. Go ahead. Do it, do a it. lot of people use uses a scripture uh, a lot right here on some of this. When you was talking about take his body to church to heaven, you was talking there in Colossians 3, 4, and talking about the glory and stuff. And then it, it, number four what there on your note thing was save the righteous from the wrath to come. And right. you don't hear people today when tragedy hits, you know, today and stuff. They'll use this scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and you hear it a lot, and I believe it's it needs, just something needs to be pointed out. You know, there's a younger generation out there today, brother, who really don't understand a lot of the things of God that's going on right now, and right. some of them are kind of shaking the fist at God and, and this, that, and the other, and uh, then I, I can remember even people in mind, they say, Verse 28, and ye know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And they say, you know, tragedy will strike home and, so, and stuff. And I just know God's using this for, uh, for our glory and stuff. Uh, you know, but you got to be, <coughs> be qualified. Oh, come on. Gotta, qualified for this scripture to apply to you and that uh -huh. is do you love god you yep. see, it's working together for good of them that love god i got news for some people there's a lot of people that tragedy hits and stuff but yep. they don't love god they never yep. served god 
They well, never, you know, well, what is what is that? What does that mean to love God? You know, Jesus said multiple times, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." See, we don't want we don't want to follow the laws and the rules, but the laws and the rules. I mean, we we're not bound to them like they were in the Old Testament. We we have the laws and the rules that even in the Old Testament they were there to keep us from burning our hands on the stove. Sure. Don't touch the stove. <laughs> it's hot. Oh, uh, do it. Touch the stove. You get your hand burnt. You know, the laws are there for our safety and for our prosperity. He says, speak words of life. Today I said before you, life and death. And then he says, choose life. But if you start speaking words of death, oh, I'm dying to go. It just kills me to see that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, th those kind of things right there, they bring death to you. And he said, that's a spiritual law. And people don't understand that. And, uh, ooh. It, it, yeah, you got to love God. You got to keep his commandments. He says, choose life. Got to love God. And and he's, there, he, that's, how so, you, that's how you love him. So many people without God, without Christ today, that they're, they're so busy at finding things in the word of God that justifies their sin. No, you need to let this word of God set you free, deliver right. you. And we're supposed to line up our lives with the word of God. What the word right. says. Right. Not look, not, look, uh, not look to the scripture to find uh, scriptures that justify the way we're living. Right. The scripture no. should, we, don't, we don't want to adjust the scripture to our way of living. Yeah. We let the scripture adjust us to God's way of living. That's it. That's the way it's got to be done. <laughs> but there's a lot of people who that say, well, I believe in Jesus. But right. You, know, you want to know the truth? There's a lot of those people will not go to heaven. There's a lot. They give lot. lip service but only. They say they know Jesus, or they they'll even say I believe in Jesus, but that don't. That's not it. That's not the 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 thing of it. And I see so much sorrow today. I hate to think of the things that's gone on. You know, the people that's lost loved ones and and all these sort of things with all that's going on today. And uh, and 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 it just seems like there's so many. It seems like more and more and more of it. They don't have a hope. They don't have no hope at all. And this right here is the only place you're going to find some Bible hope. Is getting oh, oh, no, there's another place. <laughs> right here. <That's laughs> these, it. Things are, these things are everywhere, all over the earth, these things. Everywhere. <laughs> the Bible. But you God's need, Bible. you got to get in the Word. Not a, yep, it, the it's, word. it's a requirement. Because it'll bring your hope back to you. You, know, you, you, you can't. See, he, know, he knows the end from the beginning. So all these things that are happening in the world today, the coronavirus, the rioting, that stuff has gone on many, many times before. Solomon said everything that was shall be. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it's a repetitive thing. There's nothing yeah. new under the sun, Solomon said. And, uh, you know, so these things, God knew they were happening. He wrote it in our scripture so we would know they would come to pass. So we wouldn't be afraid of them. Yeah. So we'd have a hope that he's coming for us because he loves us. And he's not going to let us get caught if we if we love him and we keep it stay in under his wing and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, then he'll protect us and keep us during these times. Psalms 91 is so important for us Today. in these last days. Yes, it is. You know, there's, it's so important. Need to read it every day. Because the tribulation period is right around the corner. We don't be a part of that. And uh that's the third, that's the, the final reason. For the uh, appearing of Jesus is to start that tribulation period. That's right. Yep. And, and, in, um, and in and in Revelation uh, chapter six, he he he's, he he starts the tribulation period there. Back we talked about this uh, last uh, session we had together. Uh, back in Revelation chapter five, we find Jesus standing at the throne, and everybody was worried because no one was found worthy to open and and read yeah. the scroll or even look at it. Yeah. And he said, Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, <laughs> uh, the root of David has prevailed to open the scroll. And so when Jesus opens the scroll, we see him open the scroll in chapter six. Now we saw there a lamb who opened one of the seals. And I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud voice, with a voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked and behold, a white horse and he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. This is the Antichrist, 
Notice that he that he uh, he had he was on a white horse, but he uh, had a bow. He didn't have any arrows. So we got a little bit of a deception going here. And it <laughs> says he was given a crown. But we know that Jesus has crowns of inheritance and merit and conquest. But this guy was given a crown. And we know Jesus has conquered everything above the earth and heaven, on the earth and below the earth. He's conquered them everywhere. But this guy is going forth conquering. This is the Antichrist. This is Jesus peeling the seal off in heaven with the church up there watching the crystal sea and the, the tribulation period beginning right there. And let me just, let me kick over a cow and it's sacred cows. I know how much you love kicking over the sacred cows. <laughs> and uh, so we go on with the horse riders opening here. First one is a red horse rider, a man of war, who starts a, a war that happens in one day at the beginning of the tribulation period, because after that war, this is in Ezekiel 38, uh, excuse me, 39, 8, and 9, we see that that war, when it's over, there's a seven-year period that Israel has this fuel to burn for seven years. It's enough supply for them to burn that they gather out of their enemies that come against them. But when we get down into verse 8, we're going through the four horse riders here, and uh, verse 7, so when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and hell followed with him. And listen to this and power or authority mm -hmm. was given to them over. What does your Bible say? Over the fourth part of the earth. Oh, over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger and with death and by the beast of the earth. So the power and authority was given to them, the white horse rider, the Antichrist, the red horse rider, the man of war, the black horse rider, the man of shortages, and the pale horse rider of, of, of hell and death, death and hell. Authority was given to them over how much of the earth? One fourth. That's what it says here in this Bible. That's what it says in this Bible. That's what it says in this Bible. <laughs> I don't care what translation you have. It says one fourth of the earth. And who's the first one of the four horse riders? The Antichrist. He only has power and authority over one fourth of the earth, That's not right. the whole world. No. The Antichrist does not rule the world. You have so many preachers on TV today and throughout pulpits throughout America and throughout the world teaching that the Antichrist is coming, a one world government that's going to rule the world. There's that and one that world government. is not true. It that is, is a lie it from the pit not. of hell. There's and the, they just haven't, they've been mistaken. They're, the they're only, sincere, but they're sincerely wrong. The, the only one world government that will be set up is the millennial reign of Christ. That's it right. Will be a, it will be a one world government. Baby. That's right. That's, that's right. That's when it comes. That's when he comes. And you know what? <laughs> That takes us right into the purpose of the second coming at the end of the tribulation period. Yes. One reason for that is for, for Jesus to be set up his theocracy, where he rules and reigns on the earth with his body, the church, for a thousand years. And that's Isaiah 9, 6. Remember Isaiah 9, 6? It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government's will be upon his shoulders and he and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace so th that's one reason that he comes uh is for that to sit up at theocracy that's one of the reasons that he comes to the earth not appearing in the clouds he comes to the earth and sits up his throne on earth at that time and uh, you can also see that in Revelation 19, 15, where he says that he comes to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And uh, so that's the first reason why Jesus comes at the end for, the, uh, for his second coming. That's the first reason for his second coming. And when he comes, like I said, he's coming to rule and reign with his body. Actually, we're called the body of Christ, the church and the army yep and so we we see in revelation 19 if we get in revelation 19 and 19 11 we see jesus comes to make war 19 11 says i saw 
heaven opened and behold a white horse. Now this white horse rider is not the one that we just talked about. Yeah. This is Jesus. And he that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So we see when Jesus comes for his second coming, the second advent, that's what the word advent means coming. He's coming to make war. Yep. And he's making war. Who is he going to make war with? It's not the Ezekiel 38 war. That's a whole different group of people. But when we read over and we skip over in, in, in chapter 19 to verse 19, and it says, I saw the beast, which is the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So at this battle, the battle, this battle of Armageddon, when Jesus comes back with his army, notice that even the Antichrist sees him coming on the white horse with his army. And if we look down a little bit further in verse four, uh, excuse me, in verse 14 there in chapter 19, and it says, coming with Jesus and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine white, clothes of fine linen, white and clean. That is God's army, the church, the body of Christ. Notice, at the end of the tribulation period, we come from heaven. We don't come off of the earth, go up into the heavens of the, earth, of the earth's atmosphere and make a U-turn and come back. We, we don't, I, don't, I don't believe in the U-turn theology. I don't find that in the scripture. I don't find a U-turn theology in the scripture. But we come back with Jesus on white horses also. Yes. There's animals in heaven, hallelujah. Yes. We come back on white horses. And, and notice when we come, we're, we're, called, we're called an army. And we're known as an army now. Paul gave us these instructions. Uh, you know, we know that we have weapons. You know, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For the breaking of strong, breaking down and the tearing down of strongholds to restrain the wicked one. That's what we got right now. We, we, we're in the army of God. We can tear down his strongholds that he has on other people and that he has on areas and, and different things. And, you know, and we're in Timothy. We're instructed there. Paul gives instruction to Timothy in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2. He says, uh, he says, we're almost our very first part. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the power that's in Christ Jesus. And when you're born again, Christ Jesus comes to live inside of you. Be strong in the power of the one that lives inside of you out there. Amen. If you're, I mean, body of Christ, listen to me. Be strong in the one that lives inside of you. You have power. You have his grace. That's his, that's his supernatural power on top of your natural power. Yeah. And it says in verse 2, and, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, Commit these things to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And then Paul says this to Timothy, and, I, and, it, and it's the Holy Spirit saying it to you believers out there today. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, we're calling you soldiers thousands of years ago. He's calling you a soldier. He knew you'd be a soldier. No one entangles, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Well, who's enlisted you? Jesus. Amen. He, he's, the, he's the captain. He's yep. the captain of host. And we're part of that host. We're not in heaven right now. We're not part of the heavenly host right now. We have members of the body of Christ that's already gone to heaven, but we're part of the earthly host. So see, we're in a battle here, and we're going to be in a battle when we come back. But Jesus has already fought the battle. He's given us the victory already. All yes. we have to do is walk in faith to see it through. Amen. And now we also know that when he comes, Zechariah 14, verse 4 and 5 says that he comes and he puts his feet on the Mount of Olives. And so he puts his feet down there on the Mount of Olives. And we also see in that chapter, uh, he says that he comes with all his saints with him as the body of Christ. It's referring to the army again. So that's uh, the second reason Jesus has to return for his second coming at the end of the tribulation period. And he also begins the battle of Armageddon 
because when he comes out of the clouds there in Revelation 19, that's when he uses the sword and he comes to make war. And uh, we mentioned that this battle is not the Ezekiel 38 battle. There are different people. It's in a different kind of location. Uh, you know, the Ezekiel 38 battle was, they were coming against Jerusalem, but they before they could get to Israel, uh, God uses his wrath and wipes them all out. So it's different areas. So he comes to begin the battle of Armageddon, and he comes that day to pour out the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of the Lamb is poured out. Revelation uh, 6 and 14. I'm looking at our time there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. probably shouldn't. Revelation 6 and 14 says, And heaven departed as a scroll when it, this is on the last day of the tribulation period. And heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. So the heavens that we see today, they're tangible. They can be rolled back. You can see up into the heavens of God where the dwellings of angels are. And so it's rolled back and it says, the islands were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man, this is covering a lot of people here, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. This is the day of Jesus's wrath, not God's wrath, not Satan's wrath, but the Lord Jesus Christ has his own wrath. And it says, hide us. They're trying to hide from it. We already know that you can't hide from the wrath of God. You just don't want to be in it. And then verse 17 says, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who will be able to stand? It is a day. It is one day that the wrath of Jesus, the Lamb, comes. So he comes on the last day of the tribulation period for the purpose of pouring out his wrath on the wicked. And when he does that, right before he pours out all the wrath on the wicked, he takes the rule of the Antichrist and he brings the tribulation period to an end. Yes. That goes oh, back God. that goes back to Revelation 19 and verse 20 where it says and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him which were lying miracles which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. These were both cast alive into the lake of fire. Notice that the Antichrist was not dead and was being kept alive by the false prophet or anything like that. No, the Antichrist and the false prophet were both alive at this time. Some people teach that because they say he received a mortal wound yeah. and that the uh, false prophet makes him look like he appears like he's alive. But nope, he is alive according to scripture. Yeah. And he says both of these were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And so the rule of the Antichrist comes to an end. The tribulation period is brought to an end on that last day. And then it says on in verse 21, the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of the mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All the birds were filled with their flesh because he had called them for the great supper of the lamb. He yeah. called all the birds to come and eat up the flesh that was left over because it's a mess. Um, and uh, so all the rest of the, of, the, of the wicked, rebellious are killed at that time. Um, and this happens on the last day of the tribulation period. And this is a day that gets real dark. And when we go, we realize in Zechariah 14, 7, we realize that at the end of that day, because of the darkness that was there, that was causing so much havoc and everything on the Antichrist men during this battle and uh, during the outpouring of the wrath of the Lamb, that at the end of that day, it says that uh, it turns light. That evening, it becomes light again. Yeah. Because at the end of that last day of the tribulation period begins the first day of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ and us, the church. Amen. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, 5, God called the light day and called the darkness night. The evening and the morning were the first day. Yes. 
So once again, at the beginning of the millennial period, the evening will be the morning of the, the evening will be the first part of the day and it'll be light Amen. <laughs> that evening. That'll be the first part of the first day. So that's another reason. And, um, and he, so he, he ends the tribulation period, kicks off the millennium. He also begins to complete the restoration of Israel at that time. Uh, Israel, the whole tribulation period, um, according to Daniel, is for the purpose of Israel. It's called a time of Jacob's trouble, referring to Israel. So it's really for them to get to get saved. If I go back here in Daniel, if I can draw this out, because I don't have it marked real quick. But I'll try to find it here for you because I want you, I want us to see it. I believe it's Daniel chapter seven here. Da -da 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 -da. Oh man, Pastor, I might be able to find it fast enough where he talks about it. I know I got it. When you got so many different Bibles and you mark it, mark it in one and not the other. <laughs> All right. Lesson seven. Nope. Here it is. Chapter nine. <laughs> this is the purpose of the, of the 70 weeks. Or it says a nine and 24 says the 70 weeks are determined for your people, for the Holy city. And so the last part of the 70 weeks is the tribulation period. It's known as the time of Jacob's trouble. And this is the purposes for the Israel. It's really for the Jewish people. And this is what it's for. It says in verse chapter nine of Daniel, verse 24, to make a finish of the transgression. So their blatant revolt and a breaking away from God. It's going to bring an end to that. To make an end of sins. Their shortfall from following God's ordinances. You know, to, to correct Israel's shortfall from following God's ordinances. To make reconciliation for iniquity. Uh, their perverted and wicked conditions as the people of God will be changed. He's going to make reconciliation. He's going to reconcile with them because of their uh, perverted and, and wicked ways that they've had as, a, as the people of God. And to bring everlasting righteousness into play. Mm -hmm. So he's going to restore right standing with God for mm -hmm. Israel. He's going to restore everlasting righteousness. And to seal up the vision and the prophecy, which he's going to fulfill all of Bible prophecies that have been written. That goes right on through the book of Revelation. All of it will be fulfilled, you know, coming through this time. Uh, that's, you know, the purpose for the Jews to finish all their prophecies to be fulfilled and, and then uh, also to restore their original plan that he had for Israel and to anoint the most holy, which is one of the other reasons he comes at the end of the Jesus comes at the end of the tribulation period to the earth is to have his millennial reign start on the earth. So. Mm -hmm. And then and, rule and reign with him, and we rule and reign with him for a thousand years. We get to change locations, don't we? We go to heaven for seven years, but then we come back to the earth. Yeah. Okay. See, we don't we don't go to heaven forever. We just go for for seven years, and then we come back to the earth, and we rule and reign on the earth. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the tribula, a lot of the millennial reign period of time, will we not be? Uh, most of us in uh, Israel. Well, we will definitely go there. I mean, Jesus will be uh, stationed there, and he'll, he'll be the he's the captain, as we said, of this army. Yeah, the Lord of Hosts, and yeah. uh, so we will have to report to him, even though we may be stationed in other areas. Right. Yeah. We'll still go and have to report to him and get to worship him and see him face to face. <laughs> oh man, it's going to be so good. Hey, I'm so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit. We got one more point there. We've gone an hour now, Pastor Joe, and uh, yeah. I wanted to go over them uh, real quick again. The purpose for his appearing in the clouds, the resurrect the righteous dead, to gather his body, the church together as one, flawless and glorious, to take his body, uh, the church to heaven, 
uh, to save the righteous from the wrath to come, to reveal the Antichrist, yep. to start the tribulation period. And we said that Jesus appears in the clouds at this time, not on the, not on the earth. And then for the second coming of Jesus at the end of the seven year period, after at the end of that seven years is his return to the earth with his army. He begins the battle of Armageddon that day. It lasts just a little bit of time. He pours out his wrath that day. That's three. He takes the rule of the Antichrist and ends that and ends the tribulation period. And he sits up his theocracy in his throne, beginning the millennial reign. And he's there to complete the, the restoration of Israel. And the last one that we didn't mention was he binds Satan in the pit for a thousand years. Throws a chain on old boy. <laughs> he's and, going. Now the punishment starts for him. You know, he's not punished today. Oh, uh, he's got a pretty bruised head. He does. but he, he, he can walk around in pain. He thinks he's okay. Yeah. But he's well, not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, there's men in hell in that place that was prepared for him. Right. And they're, angels, not, yep. they're not getting out of there. No. Nope. And there's men and women in there, and Satan is still roaming around here. So there's a certain amount of freedom that he has that they certainly don't have. But there's coming a day Satan's going to be cast into that lake of fire. And yep. uh, that's at the now that lake of fire is at the end of the millennial period. Right. Now, for that thousand years, oh, he's really? bound in the pit. Right. Because, see, everybody that's still, the humans that made it through the tribulation period that are still alive, the mortals that lived through the thousand-year period, they they have never, when the people were getting born again, because they'll still be having babies then, people will still be uh, procreate, sure. procreating on the earth. And so there'll be a lot of people that had never been tempted never by been. Satan. Right. They never had the tempter. And if Jesus, if Jesus or if the Father God was to allow them to go to heaven and go into eternity without the people that have perished before who had to deal with the devil and lost and didn't win, didn't get the victory because they didn't have Jesus Christ in their life. You know, those people who are dying when they're resurrected to go in. Yeah, when they're resurrected, going to the lake of fire, they could say, "Hey, all these people that are born in the millennium, you're not just God. That's right. unjust to that's let unjust. make us be tried and them not be tried." Right. So that's why at the end of the millennium, I believe this is one of your original questions: is why he's released at the end of the thousand years, right. and it's to tempt those people who have not yet, in the middle of the millennial period, and the isn't it amazing? For a thousand years, they never accept. Jesus as their Lord. It's amazing. They, they just, still they, will turn from God. Yep. And, they, and, and they and they and he gets a small gathering. This is as the sands of the sea. I think that's around a most theologians, but I think say it's like 120,000 or something like that, some kind of number like that. Only a few hundred thousand out of a multitude of a population on the earth. And uh they're destroyed quickly, burn up, and then uh everyone's raptured off the earth to the great white throne judgment for the wicked the righteous will be judging the angels at that time i'd love to give you all these scriptures that's in they're in your bible and uh we'll have to do that one we'll, again a little later or something yep, then we'll get the new heaven and the new earth will be made down here and we'll come back with god the father and jesus and we'll all live on the earth for eternity yes glory to god so, well, uh, I guess that means we'll have to at least do one more at some point in time on this thing. Well, that's fine with me, man. I've enjoyed talking with you, and I, I hope everybody out there has enjoyed it. Man, y'all guys, let us know uh, if, you, if you liked it. You know, make sure you comment on uh, either the Prophecy and Promises page, but mainly on the Spirit Life Church page. And we're just so thankful for Pastor Joe and, and Spirit Life Church. Um, they do a great job down there in Alabama, and if you're anywhere near Graysville, yeah, get over in there. We talked about that earlier. You need to get around the anointing so Amen. the yoke can be broken off of your life. Amen. Amen. Well, this sure has been good, brother. Yep. And uh, I'll have to get back with you here in a little bit. We'll we'll talk about maybe doing setting something else up again or something. Because I like to just finish it out. I like for everybody to kind of know exactly, you know, 
how the, the very end of it plays out and, and, and stuff too, if, since we've covered what we've covered. But uh, it sure has been good. And yep. uh, I think we should, uh, maybe there's somebody out there watching that, that's never accepted Jesus. And these things, you know, the all, one thing that you could, the prophecies and the promises of the Bible, they're all, they're all free once you accept Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you know, I mean, I say they're all free. Some of them have requirements. You can't have tithers rights without tithing. That's right. And, uh, you, you said tonight, you know, uh, this, all things work out for good to those who love him. And if you love him, you're keeping his commandments. There's requirements for some of the promises of God, but none of them are good for you if you've never accepted him, Jesus, as your Lord and Savior. And there's no requirements for that. None. All you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected for you and confess him with your mouth. And the scripture says, you shall be saved that's Amen. all you have to do Very so, simple. so pastor you want to you want to lead us in a in the rest of the altar call there on this amen for those that may be there in that position today let's 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 pray if you're here right now you want to make that commitment let's just take that time right now to ask jesus into your heart and be lord and savior say lord jesus forgive lord, me of my sins lord jesus forgive me of my sins I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you are the Son of God. I, died, I, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. Conquering death, hell, and the grave for me. Conquered death, hell, and the grave for me. Jesus, come and be my Lord. Jesus, come and be my Lord. Take my life. Take my life. Right now and do something with it. Right now and do something with it. I believe in my heart now I am saved. I believe in my heart now I am saved. Hallelujah. Now you've got to get Amen. in a Bible believing church. Yes. Amen. The things of God. Amen. Glory. Glory to God. And, <laughs> and uh, I feel saved all over again. Glory to God. Great Hallelujah. It's, it's great awesome. Adventure. And it's the most wonderful adventure in the world. Let me just bless everybody real quick. Thanks for okay. everybody that watched. Father, we call them all blessed right now. Yes, in Jesus blessed, name. blessed, blessed. I think that the, the healed of God, yes. I think the favor of God goes before each and every Protection one. Protection of, of God upon In Jesus' mighty yes. name. I think that every person yes. within the sound of my voice is prosperous and everything they put their hands to, Father. Do. We'll because it's part yeah. of the blessings of God upon yeah. them. And we thank you for it. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Oh. In Jesus' name. Jesus' amen. name. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Well, so Pastor, you we love you, and uh, we love we, we, we love the world, and uh, y'all come to see us sometime real soon. Amen. All right. God bless you. We'll see y'all later. Bless you. Bye-bye.